I can just show up at the shows here. That's a very American thing. <laughs> Deep fried and butter, just put it together. I mean, you gotta have the butter on something. It's just, I mean, what are you doing at that we point? We will literally deep fry anything. Yes, we will. We deep fry ice cream, Tales which is actually butter. really good, but that's oh, beside the point. It is really good. It doesn't make ice any cream makes sense. sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. Because no, usually it doesn't make when sense. it's uh, usually when you get the deep fried ice cream. It's still cold on the inside. Yeah, it's a solid. See, ice. it makes sense right there. But they dipped it ice. into oil that is like three thousand degrees. It's the um. Yeah. It's the water philosophy, where because of the batter, it coats it, so that gets fried first, and then they pop it out. Not only that, but he takes time to transfer, so. It, the batter doesn't only protect it, but it's taking the brunt of the heat first. This is true. Ice cream has flavor, therefore it gets deep, fr deep fried. I don't see what your problem is with this. Are you sure you're not American? Uh, yeah. The fact that it's three <laughs> after 3 a.m. now. Definitely a test of that. What's the temperature outside? Less than 17 degrees Celsius. So, 36 degrees Fahrenheit? Possibly. Let's see if I'm right, actually. <laughs> I start to look out. It's 62.6 .6 degrees. Okay, uh, math is not my strong suit. Well, to be fair, I just used Alexa. Okay. I don't know conversion rates. Neither do I. Um, Fahrenheit to Celsius is times five ninths and Celsius to Fahrenheit is... Oh, and my... I know, kilometer... I know kilometers to miles is one point... times 1.6. Well, roughly, anyway. That's I'm about it. <laughs> That's just too much math for me. Yeah, who needs math? Yeah. Especially when you start adding letters into it. That's crossing the line! Or symbols of any kind. Yes. Addition, subtraction, and like multiplication and division. That's all you need. Now, who even needs that? Just count off straight to a million. In binary. Not that skilled. <laughs> It's simple, it only uses ones and zeros, it's just the configuration of them. I'm not that skilled. <laughs> I used to know how to add binary. That was the coolest thing I ever learned in college.
So apparently back in 2010, somebody uh, paid 10,000 bitcoins for two pizzas. Nowadays, if they use that 10,000 bitcoins, they could buy 28 million large cheese pizzas. Now you make me uh, want to get pizza today. Uh, 165,000 uh, 165, moped scooters for the local delivery. Uh, three million, or sorry, three commercial airplanes. And 14 billion after dinner mints. Wow, mints. So, everyone, new donation goal. Uh, pizza for the three of us today. What did I get pizza? Viewers. Um, because you're not here, so you can't eat the pizza with us. The pizza I'm... would be really, really good. You're the feral werewolf, so you get pizza. You just have to jump up and steal it from the table. Okay, he's making sure the no, pizza. No, he bakes for the scraps. You no, absolutely I steal the pizza get all of looking. my. You get all of my crust. Pizza bones, as we call them for our dog. Yeah. Nah, screw that. I'm ordering my own pizza. I don't Most even want to. them, stores them away, and then they come back out like three months later, about as dry as a piece of cardboard. Goes into werewolf form just to order pizza when they get to the house. There's just a dog. A really big dog. Pretty much. <laughs> I'll be right back. I haven't gotten Paradox yet. I should fix that. Poppers, I didn't even see you. My dog was sleeping under my bed. Oh, hold on.
All right, hello, all you wonderful people out there, and the werewolf, and welcome to the stream. I am Law Zim, and this is Darkest Dreams World of Darkness. I will turn it over now to Kerr for the recap, because, you know. <laughs> it's been you a while. Guys had you guys had just escaped Erebus after getting thrown into the Umbra, the spirit world, uh, by a marauder who was batshit freaking crazy. And uh, while you were in Erebus, though, the ruler of the realm gave you someone to watch over. A small werewolf child. Um... It was in their Krenos form, their full werewolf form. And you were told that this was the prophesized one. The perfect Matisse, the one who would herald the end times. Armageddon, Apocalypse. The final battle for the fates of Gaia, as the werewolves would call it. For Sky, it would be Gehenna, the time of awakening for the ancient antediluvian vampires who would rise up and eat all of the vampires. Or do other horrible, horrible things to them. You know, same old, same old. Different names for different uh, the races, as well as different events. But afterwards, you all were sent back into the normal world near where you guys originally were knocked into the umbra it's a quiet side street for the most part no one around as far as you guys can see and that is where we begin again if no one has any questions uh no but Cody's just going to let out a small sigh. Well, at least we've made it out of that. Mm -hmm. Sky is going to check his phone and see just how much time has passed since. It has been about an hour. Huh, felt like longer. Oh, yeah. It was longer, as far as you know. The kid had a uh, guardian that was sent with him, didn't he? Or am I remembering wrong? I believe you guys were supposed to be the guardians, if I remember right. I thought there was a big, not werewolf guy, but... Okay, well, uh, I guess... Uh, is the child asleep, or... Oh, he's awake. He's looking around very, uh, curiously. Right. Uh, what time of day is it? Uh, ash. night. Because if it was day, it would be a pile of ash. Okay. Where is my... Oh, right. I forgot we have a vampire. <laughs> uh, where is my I'm SUV? I'm going to kill off a party member. <laughs> Kerr? Sorry, you cut out there. Uh, where's my SUV? Uh, you don't see it. Like, do I remember where I had it parked? It, it's a little bit away from here. Back towards okay. the club. Okay. I can... Uh, I was just... You're probably about a few blocks away from it. Okay, so, first order of business, we need to find some way to... Anybody got a hoodie? We just need to got my... disguise the kid. I got my trench coat and my hat, I can loan him. Great, do that. To be fair, anyone who sees him would probably go batshit crazy and start running away screaming. Yeah, and that's forget the last all about thing it. we want. 
I I uh drape my uh coat and hat over him. Great. We'll get you something he better. He looks kind of uncomfortable with that, but he doesn't really complain as he struggles to get it on. <laughs> You'll get used to that. We'll, we'll get we'll get you something better soon. We're just trying to at least get you back to. I guess we should go to the club first. The club? What's that? A friend is there that could probably offer us uh, quite a bit of help uh, on all of this. Or at least someplace, and he just motions to the werewolf in the hat. This is commonplace. Yeah. Cross looks a little wary. Something wrong, Frost? Frost? Frost, <laughs> Frost goes to his human form just uh, to talk. Goes. May not be such an idea just to waltz in there with a perfect Matisse. Well, no, that's why we go in the back. I, I think the back is basically our special entrance now. I don't know. Uh, you do make a bit of a good point. Uh... Let's get to my SUV. We can at least get the kid and leave uh, somebody there to watch over him for the time being while we go talk to, uh, insert name here. Alric. Alric. How do I remember that, but I can't remember what we did last time. If you need someone to watch over him, I can do that much at least. Yeah, that, that'll work. Uh, so I guess we're going to first off head to my SUV. And I have perception. I believe it's awareness rolls. Perception awareness rolls. Does anyone have any supernatural senses going at the moment? Uh, I've almost always got my uh, discern on. I got, uh, I think, discern on too. No. Is uh, it awareness or alertness? Uh, it would be awareness for this one. Right, right. Um, Al alertness is normal things like listening for sounds and everything. Awareness is. Uh, basically sensing supernatural things, which is why... Yeah, discern is, uh, my special thing, uh, Stanoga. Being a judge. I probably had it change. Like I said, my whole other character sheet that I had updated is gone. So I just have pictures of whenever I made it. If it's not hearing related, that would be two. A big fat zero. Okay. Uh, usually the difficulty is seven or above. Oh. Yeah. In that case, that's one. And ones do One. subtract, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I was going to also ask if I could try to use some of my entropy magic so we're lucky and don't run uh, into I, normal I, pedestrians. I was going to ask real quick, Bren, which spheres of magic do you have? Correspondence, entropy, forces, and time. Give me an Arate roll. 
real quick. I forget. I if didn't mean the, I. Yes, I didn't mean you to be God. There, that five is middle and average. <laughs> okay, so Frost, we need your roll as well. Right. And Reykjavich's. Uh, what is it? Is for being a werewolf or? Hmm. Not for this one. Normally, yes, you would get bonuses to your perception, I believe, in a, in a wolf form. Uh, oh. If it does, then yes, you can add those onto the sheet. Okay. Uh, that's, it does give you the uh, bonuses you get in your different forms on page two of your character sheet. Is it just a flat awareness roll? Perception awareness. Not off. Uh, actually, you're supposed to roll d10s. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, it's been a while. I was like, oh no, a minus one, but okay. Okay, you got a zero. I don't think I have any awareness. <laughs> it would be your perception minus one. And re-roll the 10. Yep. Damn! Frost got four successes. Well, I am a werewolf, you know. Okay, I need yeah. to roll real quick. He got four successes and had the least number of dice. I'm just so lucky. I think Jim is jealous. Yeah. Oh no, Jim right, is just so... pawning your demise. Bren and Frost both notice something. Uh, for Frost, it is a scent downwind. This is a foul scent. It is... You can almost describe it as the scent of rotten fruit. Sweet, but overly sweet and disgusting. Uh, for you, Bren, you feel a disruption with the tapestry. You sense someone using magic nearby. Cody and... is currently distracted, uh, trying to find a way to better hide the kid's uh, tail. One moment... There was nothing there. The next, you send someone in a nearby alleyway. And they're coming towards you guys. Frox goes back to his wolf form. Uh, I'm going to lightly nudge uh, Sky and kind of point in the direction. We have company. Oh, wonderful. As if we didn't have enough company just a little bit ago. Good or bad company. Alright, um... Well, since we now know that we have company and the direction it's coming from, would I be able to go and try to hear how many companies we might have coming? 
Uh, yes, I will allow you to make that roll. Alright. So that's probably another awareness perception roll, right? Mm hmm. Uh, one, because the, uh... Oh, does listening give you bonuses? Um... Acute sense, uh... Oh, minus two difficulty, so no, that would just be one then. Okay. Um, you can hear the sound of one pair of footsteps coming towards you. You have maybe 30 seconds before the person comes out. Anybody want to take the lead? I'll uh, step up in front of the group. Uh, is Cody's uh, does Cody still have his sword that shoots laser beams? Here's to new beginnings. Or is it back to a shotgun? Uh, yes. It should be back. To it level. is a shotgun. Oh. He's a little sad about that, but he's got his shotgun ready, and he's uh, going to head towards the front. Of course, he's got his discern on. I uh, <laughs> suppose I'm going to stand beside, be right behind them with my apparent tongue of silver, given the fact that uh, what's-his-face isn't here anymore. remember the name of it. My only weapons are my fists, so I load my fists. <laughs> you just hear and a shell just flies out randomly. Um, can I have willpower rolls from Cody and Rykovich, please? So, uh, I think I win. Rakovic reroll those two tens for me. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, nine successes for me. <laughs> Does that win? <laughs> Okay, so neither of you are turned into a quivering, bawling pile of terror and tears as the figure rounds the corner and kind of walks towards you a little bit. Um, to everyone else, he appears to be a simple man in his late 30s early 40s very fine black suit tie um very average looking very normal it would be very difficult to pick him out of like a lineup or on the street and uh as he's adjusting his cuffs a little bit you can see what looks like bracers underneath the sleeves of his outfits and he is very casually walking towards you coming to a stop about 15 feet away for Rykovich and Cody though you can see the image of the man you can see him and Cody you know this person 
this is uh, his name is Daniel Felt. He is the lead acquisitions expert for your branch of Pentex. It is his job to get what the company wants, whether that is getting people hired, getting buildings bought, um, getting new technology uh, acquired. It's his job to get it. And he's very good at his job. If you needed something, he was very good at making sure you got it within minutes, hours, or for the most difficult things, a day. Except you don't see just him. You see something behind him. Its form is large. 12 to 13 feet tall and it's just dripping in blood ooze and other things that are best left unmentionable likely its body looks like a desiccated husk like it's just barely holding itself together with sinew and the uh taut uh dried skin and you can see very long talons at the end of each of its hands each one about the size of one of your fingers. And another thing that does stand out is along this thing's arms are what look like a pair of bracers, each one glowing with five sigils on it for each one. You come to uh, hire me back. As the man comes to a stop, looking towards Cody. Actually, yes, I was, Cody. It's so good to see you. And with this, oh, I can see you going very high in the company. As he waves a hand to the child who looks absolutely batshit fucking terrified. Frost just moves in front of the kid and growls. He gets a small chuckle of amusement. Now, Cody, Cody, Cody. I know how well you've worked with Pentex in the past, and it was a terrible business losing you, honestly. I did fight to try to keep you. You were extremely useful. And right now, I have full permission, after we heard what you did just a few minutes ago, to hire you back, uh, fully re uh, salary, um, retroactively paid, of course, even for the time that you were fired. And I do believe that for this, you can get quite a promotion to the top of the company, even. Possibly even a seat on the council. So I've heard. I mean, while that sounds tempting at all, I think I'd be happy just having my regular job back. Uh, it's, I appreciate the offer, but yeah, I, I'm not sure what exactly you're, I, I've done to uh, earn that anyways, but I'll just take my regular job. Well, if that's what you want, I mean, that's perfectly acceptable for me. It doesn't affect me at all. Uh, if you do want to be the head of your department, though, that's also on the table. Just bring the child over here and we can go and drop the papers. The, the child, uh, he, you know, I, I really cannot let my, uh, I, I can't let my sister's son go into your, uh, go with you if that's what you're wanting. Oh, no, no, of course. As a valued member of Pentex, uh, I am more than willing to see to it that you would have custody of the child while he's being trained and prepared for his role. Trained and prepared? Uh, I mean, 
Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I'd have to talk a little bit over with my companions. Of course, you know, I'd have to call uh, his mom. We, we can't uh, make decisions on training. Cody, Cody. I know who this child is. And I know what he represents. He is the chosen one of our Lord. Of course. He is to be our glorious overlord and leader to finally end this war. So, out of character, uh, this kid is one of the ones that uh, I was not supposed... Or, like, this guy's one of the ones we're supposed to protect the kid from, right? Yes, okay. Pentex wants him. Um, Pentex what, are the bad guys. Yeah, I, I know a, they are. Uh, I just wanted to make sure. Make an intelligence plus a cult roll. I'm going to spend a point of willpower to re-roll. Oh, okay. Okay. Much better! I was just doing some... Five! Up ...on my ability. <gasps> that was a terrible first roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> As Cody's like, you know, that sounds great. Here you go. It's all on the up and up. His sister's fine. Um, to your knowledge, what you would know is base, and this is because of your relationship with Frost. You would know this. Um, the Guru believed that the perfect Matisse is the sign of the end times. All Matisse are born with a deformity, either in body, mind, or spirit. And this is because of the way they are born, by two Guru mating. Guru is not supposed to be with Guru. That's one of the, basically, laws of the werewolf tribe. And whenever they do, a Matisse is what results. The perfect Matisse, though, does not have any deformities. It does not have any flaws at all. And it's said when the perfect Matisse is born, that's the herald of the end times. And that the perfect Matisse is going to be the leader, one of the leaders of uh, the apocalypse. But nobody knows which side he's supposed to be on. They don't know if he's supposed to be sided with Gaia against the worm, or if he's going to be the worm's most powerful general. Okay, but and we were told to keep uh, the kid away from Pentex, right? Yes, they want the, they want the boy because they want him to be the perfect general for the worm to lead his armies to wipe out Gaia and to end the world. Like I said, Pentex are the bad guys. Okay, I, I just wanted to make sure. It didn't feel like that was the way it was supposed to go, but I wanted to make sure. Especially because Cody likes his house. Yeah. Frost just glares at Cody. That was not in character! Well... You see, the problem is, unfortunately, I can't turn him over to you. Oh? Why not? Well, we were literally told by a uh, goddess to protect the kid and not let him fall into, well, your hands. And frankly, I kind of don't want to piss off a goddess. <laughs> even if she's not a, for the record, even if she's not actually a goddess, that's how Cody is interpreting her. Oh, she is. Okay. She is. I, I she's just... basically the ruler of werewolf hell. Okay. 
you see, it, it's just goddess versus... I'm sure you understand my predicament here. He's going to nod slightly as though in understanding. Yes, yes, I can see how that can be worrying. But if you are worried about issues like that, believe me, we have quite a protective uh, force that we can give to you. And you will have nothing to worry about, you or the child. You know, tell you what. You prove your good intentions by eliminating a certain other problem that we've got to, that's going to be hounding us. Yes, uh, his name is Domino. And, uh, oh, yes. he's going to be a problem pretty soon for us uh, as, or, you know, even the world as a whole. Uh, and probably for you guys even, so, you know, it's a win-win-win. But, you know, you, you eliminate him, provide proof of his, uh, demise, and then we can absolutely, uh, discuss more. I see. <laughs> so, if this domino was killed, you'd be willing to talk business and surrender the child and work with us? We can absolutely talk about it then. Mm. And as he casually pulls out a phone and makes a phone call. Yes, please deploy the red team. Um, the target is a fair folk. Yes. Um, number 4862. Yes, elimination has been authorized. It is of the highest priority. Thank you. As he hangs up and casually uh, puts it back Hang in on. his pocket. Wait, what? <laughs> this is not according to my plan. <laughs> Frost just rolls his eyes at Cody. I am saying this like, out of character. I'm just like, okay. Big army versus unstoppable almost deity. That'll keep him busy for a good long time. And, and, what? Pandex of the bad guys. Kygovic just puts his hand on his brother's shoulder and just whispers in his ears like, it was a nice try. I give you an A for effort. It might take a little bit of time. I would say an hour or two for our experts that um, we have on, on uh, well, he's not on payroll, but we, we've pointed him in the right direction before for very good results to deal with it. Uh, he's very good at killing fair folk. Uh, I would say likely take a few hours at most. Uh, that would be enough time to get the paperwork drafted and discuss terms before we get the okay that it, the deed has been done received proof. All right. In the meantime, uh, we do have some business to be about, so uh, just bring the proof and uh, you know where my house is. Indeed, indeed. Now, uh, I would like to make a deal first to ensure our assets protection in the intervening hours. All right. It's not that I do not trust you, Cody, but with the ones that you work with, I must simply ensure Pentex's assets are watched over effectively if you understand what exactly are you proposing that you do not attempt to flee with the child hide the child from us or take the child somewhere that we cannot follow that you act in good faith for our deal okay and so what is my end of that deal you don't break it Well, if you don't, go ahead, go ahead. If you don't want to deal with him, I could just kill him right here. It would be simple to make his heart just die out. If 
Frost just nods it. Out of character, I have no idea what to do at this point. Good. <laughs> you kind of backed yourself into a corner there, buddy. I did, yeah. but I wasn't expecting <laughs> there to actually be a chance they could kill a fair folk. I oh, saw yeah. The, I saw the train go. And that's the bad guys. Pentex has what's called the Red Team, and their job is literally elimination of supernatural creatures, and they're good at it. And here I was like, okay, that'll be a great way to keep them occupied for at least a month, so we can figure things out, and never, now we've got hours. Rule number one, never underestimate your opponent. Mm -hmm. you, you underestimate how much they want this boy. Literally, he goes, I need this. They go, done, and we'll give you double. Uh, I, I have an idea. Lay it on me. Okay. Um, you can do it in character or out of character. It doesn't matter. Actually, real quick before you do that, um, Bren, give me an occult plus intelligence roll. Because you're able to sense these symbols, and I want to give you a little bit of information beforehand. One. Uh, actually, because of your specific training and where you come from, you would recognize these. These are Enochian symbols of protection on those bracers, those five glowing sigils each. Hey, I'm going to pretend I know what that is. Basically, if you try to use magic, gifts, or supernatural abilities, or even just generic attack against him, uh, for each attack that would harm him, one of the sigils will burn out and protect him from the uh, damage. So he has 10 free shots. Basically, yes. Do I know if there's any ways around that? Um, it, you would need a way to dis... If he's not wearing the bracers, then it would, uh, they would not be able to protect him. Also, these things are horrifically, horrifically difficult to make. Meaning that this is likely the only pair that they have, and the reason he was given them the or given these to him is because of how important this kit is to hit them to make sure he succeeded uh the sigils will burn out no matter what type of harm it can be a lowly single bullet or it can be a lightning bolt the sigils will not differentiate from that <laughs> as long as they can Parment him. So I could easily, or potentially rather, uh, completely burn out all of his sigils with a single shotgun blast. Single shotgun blast won't do it. Uh, that would be one sigil. But he's get getting hit. Protection. It's from one attack. Oh. All the BBs come together. And they strike at the same time. The sigil would burn out, stopping all of them. But what if Bren uses his magic to make them just hit one at a time, but just in a rapid enough succen uh, succession that it'll burn out a sigil each time? That could possibly work. Again, it has to be enough that it would do one... In game terms, it has to be enough damage that would do at least one point of damage through whatever type of soak or such he has. If the attack hits him, but it would not actually hurt him, the sigil will not ignite. So, this is for damage in attacks. Does it work on things that just move things? Like, it will, pr like, from it, all will magic? Protect it, it will protect him from any directly harmful magic um any magic that would separate him from the bracers would also be considered harmful 
Garna is just the Valentrix. Yes, they did think of that when they made it. They did not spend basically a century making these just to have you warp them off. And if they did, somebody needs to get fired. <laughs> they did last time. They threw them into an acid pit. Oh, look. Upgrade. Hmm. But yes, he has 10 marks right now on these. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up in case you guys wanted to start a fight. I mean... There's options. <laughs> Not great options. For something like this, a supernatural creature, it is likely to have a bane, something, either a substance, a thing that it cannot do, or uh, some type of material that can hurt it, that will pierce through whatever protections it has and can kill it. It would be the matter of you would need time to figure out what type of weakness this thing is and what it is. Ryan is going to step forward. Look, we get your point. You can back down now. I know about those little bracelets of yours, and there's six of us here. It's only going to take a few seconds to get rid of your defenses, and well, then you're fucked. I can decay your heart and you're dead, so... Go and wait, take care of that fae for us, and then we can talk. He's going to smile at that. Sorry. It's not like I'm going to kill you for that smile. This is more of a, ooh, I like you. Oh, great. Now Brandon has another stalker. As he's going to add that to my page, <laughs> <laughs> as he's going to shift his attention to Bren. Tell me, I have two questions for you, Bren. One, what makes you think you will survive more than a few seconds? But two, and perhaps more importantly, I like your spirit and your mentality. Pentex could use someone like that, and it's ranks. Tell me, are you looking for a job at the moment? I believe that you would be a fine addition to the staff, and we can give you quite a bit of training as well in the proper ways of magic. Okay, you can stop there. Clearly, if you thought you could kill us in faster than a few seconds, you wouldn't be wearing those. So go on, run off now. But we've only just met. I'm not rude. All right, well, we've got a lot to think over. Besides, it's not like you guys can't find us wherever we may try to run if we were to. I mean, you ca you've got the resources to kill a f uh, fair folk, you know. I'm sure anywhere we go, you'd find us. So, there's your deal, you know. That said, we've got somewhere to be, so if you would excuse us... Our people will call your people. Your people call our people and we'll do lunch, darling. Now, just make sure that you don't try and get away. You won't like it if I have to come back and be less civilized. But, ciao, darlings. I will see you later. And he's literally just going to vanish. Just dissolve away. Why do they always just vanish? They think like they're making a statement or something. Like, just, just walk away. You don't need that. Ren is going to lean against a building and wring his uh, hair through his fingers and just cover his face. Cody's going to turn to everybody. Okay, so, yeah, I, I was not anticipating them being so confident about uh, fulfilling that so quickly. But we still at least have an hour. 
So I Here, say Bertrand. we get to Alric now. Frost glares at where they were and glares at Cody. Or then, rather. Ragavish is going to look to Cody. He's like, I thought you were the smart one. I'm supposed to be the dumb one. Frost glare just says, Pentex are the bad guys. <laughs> I know they're the <laughs> bad guys. I just don't. I do not believe that we could have handled him as well as whatever backup he has as well. Ah, I don't worry. He only he only has he only has backup if the uh, donation goal is met. So, to Alric now, preferably yesterday, but you know. Anyone disagree? We were just at uh, our yesterday. <laughs> Sky will push you into the sunlight. Let's go. Oh, who moved him? Uh, it wasn't moved. It looks like disconnect. Did you disconnect just so you didn't get thrown into the well? Mm, I plead the fifth. Wait, 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 wait. Why the well? You said you were going to push them into the sunlight, so why not the timeout sun? Okay, uh, so we'll Bren bring, uh, Chem brings up a good point. Uh, I did say I was going to push you into the sunlight, uh, Karma, so enjoy. Don't forget, I have a two on my Erte roll so that we don't run into normal pedestrians. So, as you guys set off, um, there is no sign of uh, any pedestrians, actually. The streets are, for some reason, clear as you make your way down. Don't mind all the random traffic accidents on the other side of the street. About an hour ago, there were horses and buggies. Nobody even noticed. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna collect my SUV and then get to the club because I kind of assume that the SUV is uh, on the way. And either way, you know, it would be nice. You were to... parked outside the club. Oh, okay. Then we're rushing to the club. Uh, okay. If anyone wants to make the donation go, this would be a great time to do it. Just saying. I had learned my lesson from the last time I did a donation go. Her is here just begging for a donation so he can get pizza today. I mean, pizza is good, right? Yeah, pizza is good. So you guys are able to make it outside of the sixth circle. Uh, and the back door is unlocked as normal to let you in. Is there anything yeah. you guys want to do before you go in? Nope, we're going to rush right in. Uh, As I am. Yeah. Frost is just going to let Cody rush in and... Um, either stay with the kid or act as a mount for them. Oh, we're yeah, bringing the kid just kind of up. looking around at everything, just kind of like... Wow. Uh, Frost, I understand your trepidation, but I think it's more dangerous to leave him out here. Frost glares at Cody and is staying by the kid's side regardless. Yeah, Gregor makes just like, a, like I'll, I'll, I'll take of the, I'll take care of the brother, you, you take care of the child. We good. Thumbs up. Frost nods at Rakovic. 
come on in. Alric's promised us safety here, so... I, I think we'll be okay in here. More okay than staying out there where Pentex is probably watching. Frost growls at Cody and then goes in with a kid. Uh, at this point, let's face it, it doesn't matter where we are, Pindex is watching anyway. Quick side note, just because uh, the stream and you guys will probably laugh. I was double checking what the subterfuge skill is for mages, and it tells you what certain uh, NPCs and such might have it. So like sociopaths, attorneys, hustlers, embezzlers. Uh, the first one is home wreckers. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, we're rushing to uh, Alric's office. I'm going to grab a drink on the way. I always grab a drink on the way. <laughs> uh, you can grab a drink on the way, not a problem. I would grab a drink on the way, but they probably wouldn't be too happy if I brought company. Oh my god, Karma, you're pushing it. <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> For the viewers, uh, Karma is playing a vampire. Just, you know, so you guys know what he's referring to. Bad karma. Talking about your blood points, you're not, like, in need right now, are you? No, actually, I haven't used anything that makes me need to exhaust any blood points since... At this current level, I don't really have that much to use them on. You just want to make sure. Other than just general day to day which I'm not sure that I actually exhaust any so anyways uh, Cody is gonna uh, head up the stairs uh, towards Alric's office he's going to stop at the top of them and be like uh, quick thing we should probably leave our cell phones out here Frost just looks at his fur and paws and shrugs. Well, yes, not you, but the rest of you. Just in case, you know, just in case. And uh, Cody will pull out his and find a spot to put it uh, away from the office, but, you know, outside. I pull out my cracked and broken, held together with duct capes and far along hopes and dreams cell phone. Wait, wasn't um we going to have someone stay outside in the car with the werewolf? Yeah, no, that plan in. changed when, uh, you know, Pentec showed up. Yeah. They'd probably air chopper the car out. Yeah. Frost. Yeah, I just Frost just glares at Cody again. Pentex are the bad guys. Good boy. <laughs> Dog, what are you doing? You know, it's really hard. Well, right not now, to get he's uh, treat right now. Right now, he's glaring at me and trying to convey that Pentex are the bad guys. Oh, did I meant to mute myself. Talk to my own dog. She's sitting on my lap, glaring at me, too. Oh. <laughs> Judging me harshly. So anyways, Kerr? Yes. We're, we're in Alric's office. Alric is sitting there, kind of going over some papers and such, before looking up, and he just stops when he sees the wolf boy. Before he kind of gets up and beckons you guys in. 
Okay, so you know we're oh, in you trouble. Mean we didn't Great. bust down the door in the first place? I thought that, that was the plan. Great. As long as you know we're in trouble. Yes, uh, we need help. What is that? This is the perfect Matisse. And right now oh, we've got... Yes, I realize that. I'm wondering, how in the world did you get him? Well, you remember that marauder? Yes. He sent us to Werewolf Hell. Where we met a goddess who then gave us this kid, told us to protect it. And now uh, Pentex has already approached us trying to get the kid. A magnanimous and... dispensation. Oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, Toshime. <laughs> I am uh, torn because now we get pizza, but on the flip side, it's. <laughs> <laughs> pizza, world end and destruction. Pizza, world end and destruction. Well, it's been it's a, I mean, worth it. it would have been enough. Pentex are the bad guys. <laughs> I'm going to give Sky or Sky no Frost a treat. So, anyways, as I was saying, um, yeah. We met a goddess, she gave us the kid, told us to protect it, and... Uh, Why in the bloody hell did you bring him here? Because Pentex has already approached us. We've delayed them a bit by pointing them at Domino to kill him, and apparently oh, that's they... That's why Domino came screaming into here. He's here? Yes, downstairs. Oh, fuck. Okay, um... Well, isn't that perfect? Yeah, so they're trying to kill Domino. We are, uh, we had nowhere else to go that we could think of, so help! Russ, just rouse it, Cody. Frost? I can give you sanctuary here, door. but there's only so much that I can do. Any suggestions? Any ideas? I'm wide open to anything you can uh, suggest. Because this is outside of my uh, area of expertise. And yeah. Pentex isn't going to stop until they get the hold of this boy. Oh, I'm sh I'm certain of it. So, do we take a uh, do we go on a giant uh, battle against Pentex itself? Do you think you could really win that? Absolutely not. No. But I don't see very many other options. Because. You know, they will literally chase us. Unless we hop to another dimension. Maybe it would be better to go back to Werewolf Hell. With the magic they had, they could probably follow us. It might take some time, but they could. <clears throat> yes, but at least in Werewolf Hell, you know, we've got a goddess to protect us. We're all for cheese at them. Uh, as this is going on, the, uh, red phone on the desk of our ex is going to beginning, begin to ring. He has two phones, a normal black phone and this red phone. Oh, and the red he is going ring. to frown. That's never a good idea. That's never a good sign. Maybe that's his personal pizza delivery service. I do believe I would personally know that that means we're screwed. No, 
Alric, you are connected to all of the uh, supernatural uh, beings here in uh, Empty Springs. Maybe you could help He's us organize. Maybe you could help us organize an army against Pentex. <laughs> He's gonna chuckle. It's like hurting cats as he moves over and picks up the phone. Yes, Alric speaking. Yes, I see. As you wish. And he's going to hang up the phone. Well. Joy. As about 10 seconds later, the door to the office is going to be ripped off of its hinges as a large nine foot tall snarling death beast is going to walk in. His fur is uh, black. And he has a very large blade in one hand that's very faintly glowing. Frost just immediately goes to uh, what I will form. No, <laughs> like Cody, Pentex are the bad guys gesturing <laughs> to the werewolf who just ended. Uh. Frost, you would recognize this person. I would? Yes, you would recognize this person. Uh, this is... Uh, Dancer in Moonlight is his werewolf name. Um, most people call him Moonlight. He is the leader of the Children of Gaia here in Empty Springs. He is oh. the uh, tribe leader here. Normally, he's very peaceful. He's very gentle. He's very, very kind. Right now, he looks like he's ready for war. But he's got his shotgun and uh, ready to uh, defend himself and the child. He's going to yeah. look towards uh, Cody when he sees that and give a slight nod. Listen to me right now. You come with me right now, or you're all going to die. Cody's gonna look over to Alric. No, this guy's literally gonna go with him because that seems to be the uh, status quo as of late. Just not even Alric's questioning. Gonna give a, Alric's gonna give a very subtle nod towards Cody. Okay, we're coming with you. Trust. Nods his head, but still glares at Cody. When it comes between werewolves and Pentex, go with the werewolves. Pentex are the bad guys. I'm aware they are the bad guys. I was trying right. to buy us time. Rekovix trying not to laugh <laughs> every time he frost does that. It just, it just nods. It's like. Mm -hmm. I am well aware of this fact! I would like to state I'm starting to run out of dog treats to give to, uh, Frost. We'll scratch him behind his ears, he'll be good. Uh, if he can reach his ears in werewolf form. <laughs> yeah, I'm short too, so I was yeah. like, eh. As you guys begin to pad out of the room, Moonlight's gonna look at each of you. So... You're lucky I got here first. Pentex has released two uh, packs of black spirals to come and kill you all. Fine. Well, Toshime, the there are boy. your uh, shadow dancers. Do we know what those are? Black spiral dancers. They are evil werewolves. They are evil, corrupt, batshit, crazy werewolves. Basically, a pack that went into the Worm Slayer tried to, well, do things and ended up getting corrupted. Mm hmm And now they serve the Worm, seeking the destruction and end of all things. Oh, so they released the fun ones on us. Mm hmm Basically.
Okay, I think I need to uh, step away for a moment. Uh, I, I oh. need to go fill up the uh, water thing for the cats, because my cat is... Uh... <laughs> she is trying to get water, but it ke the fountain keeps turning on and off. And every time she realizes it turned back on, she uh, it starts to lick and then it turns off. <laughs> he only noticed because I noticed her like it, it, it's on and she goes to slurp and it stops and then it's on and she looks confused and it stops and she put her head like right under it like where did the water go and then she got wet and shook her head like wait what? It sounds like what my brother's cat used to do, except it literally just laid in the sink. Okay, now I need to take- I, I gotta record a video. Hopefully I don't scare- Oh, she left. Aw. Alright, so- She knew. Yeah, she knew. So yeah, uh, Cody will go with them. Uh, he's, uh, not happy about any of this. All right, so uh, should we leave our cell phones here, or are they safe to take? They should be fine to take. Cool. Uh, he'll grab his cell phone and bring it with. Yep, same. is going to die and go with as he just puts out a like message on social media big mouth got us into trouble again <laughs> and text like this and i was <laughs> click the official uh pentex company following i am fine with that if if they share the post, then more people are going to see my social media. I can put away mage and become a uh, streamer or something. Um, as you guys get to the car, you can hear the bays of howling in the distance as moonlight shifts into a handsome man in his early 20s with black hair, green eyes and dressed very casually he still has that giant sword though now she's on his back and he's going to glance towards the howling we need to get to the park right now Bren is going to jump on his motorcycle and offer anyone a spot mm. i'm gonna go with bren this guy is going to go with bren Yay! I think I'm riding with my brother in his car. Yeah. You know, I have the feeling like I'm probably the one of the only other people that has enough skill with vehicles to be able to ride on the back of a motorcycle. All right, so we're gonna about to do a chase scene. Can I have for those who are driving? A dex plus drive roll, please. The difficulty of my rolls are minus two because I have crack driver, just to let you know. Hey, that, it's actually useful and coming in handy. This is the first time I've actually done chasing before, so let's go. Is tens two in this? Seven successes for the motorcycle driver. <laughs> oh, God. I'm getting GTA in here. So, what is it? Drive plus... Dex. Dex. Go for the eyes, boo. Go for the eyes! Rask! Oh god. Do we just get influence? I heard influence. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, Timber redeemed an influence, but he didn't fill out the inf the info. But I assume, uh, correct me in the if I'm wrong, Timber, but you want the Wolven Inquisition to show up and help us. For the record, it's a game breaking. Okay, he said, yeah. <laughs> Nobody Oh, oh god. <laughs> By the way, real quick, Timber, if you have not seen uh season 7 of Clone Wars uh or probably it's you're the in same, it. Yeah, you're in it. Uh Wrecker, is, they they stole everything about you. It even sounds like you. He sounds like you, he acts like you, he's even afraid of the same things as you. Uh, it's on Disney I literally Plus. thought it was you when I was listening to him watching it. Wolven are afraid of nothing except failing the Empress. As I, you are technically in this game, so you cannot influence it. Even if you're not here right now. Well, I mean, you're in the chat, so does that mean you're gonna come play? Oh wait, you got the second shot, so uh, I'm doubting it, but you know. Still cannot influence it. So anyways, where were we? Ah yes, chase scene. Uh, I got three. Right. Oh, fun. Uh, give me a second. You're doing pretty well, like, breaking traffic laws, but just going all right. Meanwhile, I'm doing insane sports video game, ramping off of, like, uh, <laughs> steps and such, and Sky is probably... Is Sky enjoying or freaking out? All right, so um, across the rooftops, Cody, you can see uh, a pack of twisted werewolves, their fur missing patches covered in boiled, uh, burned skin. These creatures are terrifying to look at. And they are closing in and catching up with you on the rooftops. And they are almost, almost catching up with Bren. He is barely, barely keeping ahead of them. Randall, uh, fill the automated defense with uh, silver bullets. You'll find them in the uh, glove compartment. Uh, and get that online. It's not my name as he's doing that. <laughs> All right, give me a second roll, everyone. Bren, you have one success. Uh, Cody, you have zero so far. Guy would be having a blast, by the way. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Because the difficulty for me is reduced by two, would I have two successes here? Yes. I have... Four. Let's see how they do here. <laughs> so you guys try and pull off into some side streets to lose them, to get away from them. And these werewolves are like fucking ninja on you guys. No matter how you try and lose them, they are closing in fast. And their howls are getting louder and louder. They're beginning to close in. They're almost close enough to attack. Okay, so Cody is going to flip the uh, flip the kill switch in his uh, in the SUV to activate the automated point events uh, turret on the roof that'll just pop out. They aren't quite close enough yet. 
Uh, that will trigger if you guys lose another round. Go Wait, for it. I can actually have that? Cool! Sure. <laughs> Hunters are paranoid enough to have that, yes. Yes, we are. And it's loaded with silver bullets. Oh, God! Uh, I guess I'm gonna spend another point of willpower. I don't like the fact my extra dice was a one. Uh, Another four. I'll also use a willpower. A three. Seriously. Okay. Hang on. You guys might be okay. Never mind. Anyway, uh, would I be able to use uh, alertness and perception to determine which direction they will be coming from? Seeing as we're uh, on a motorcycle. You do not like, even... Um, you do not even need to roll for this, because uh, they're everywhere. So like and they're on top of the buildings, they're behind us, they're in front of us. They're just yeah. Everywhere. There's like two dozen werewolves coming. However, just as you were about to trigger the point defense system, as they're about, to, it looks like they're getting ready to leap down. Um, they are the sounds of the Umbra ripping. Which means something is coming through. And you hear a shout go up as literally three to four dozens of werewolves, or what look like werewolves, clad in gleaming battle armor, come charging out. Uh, silvered weapons at the ready as they begin clashing against the pack and start pushing them back as the cry of FOR THE EMPRESS goes up as you guys begin to make your getaway as these uh, strange werewolves buy you the time you need to escape Thank you, Timber. <laughs> Makes a strange kind of sense. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Well, if you guys fail never... three, uh, three, if they were able to beat you in three uh, chases in a row, then they would have caught up to you and it would have started a big fight. But because of uh, the game-breaking influence, the Woman Inquisition showed up and proceeded to uh, buy you guys enough time to get away. No one expects them. No one expects the Woman Inquisition. I definitely did not expect that, but I am okay with it. <laughs> the weapons are surprised. What was that? The weapons are surprise. I heard that. I was meeting uh, Kerr. Yeah, I figured. You guys can all thank Timber for that. Thanks, Timber. And soon, you were able to make it to the park. And, uh... Moonlight quickly beckons you guys to get out of the vehicles and start moving deeper into the forest.
Hello? Yeah. I follow. Yeah. I, I, okay. I, I was plotting pizza. I was. That's right. Everything went absolutely silent. I wasn't sure if my headphones had died or not. Okay, we're not supposed to thank Timber. We're supposed to thank the Empress. Thank the I Empress. I look to uh, Cody and just say, "I've seen a lot of doggos in the last couple days." No, we really have. Not enough Martins, as Cody's gonna reach up and pet his Martin. Hmm. I'm gonna have to start carrying, like, more jerky around with me these days. Be a good investment. You think they like Jack Links? Yes. Jerky's a pretty safe bet. I'll, I'll go to the expense and uh, get the good stuff. Hey, Cody, can I borrow some money to get some good jerky? Oh, thanks. <laughs> but right now, can we worry about getting somewhere safe and then worry about that? Oh, yes. The life is in peril and protect the kid. How did I forget? Yeah, onward! As you guys are led deep into the forest to a beautiful, beautiful lake. And there's perhaps the most werewolves you've ever seen here. Over a hundred werewolves are gathered. And Moonlight's going to look at you all. Now, we have some things to discuss. End of session because god damn it, I didn't have it planned out this far, and I really thought the combats were going to take longer, and then you guys avoid both freaking combats. Which is that good? Well, okay then. I guess we're gonna end here and move over to Raft. Pentex are the bad guys. <laughs> I'm out you of here. I uh, will I'm out add of that treats. as a quote. Uh, Toshime, you can influence to have your character brought into another game. Though if you want to arrange a cameo, you don't really need to spend influence for that. Just talk with the DM. And remember, everyone... Pentex are the bad guys. I'm gonna tattoo that on him now. Fur is nice and white, so, you know, it's a very nice canvas. Oh no, not him. What's up? Sorry, I had my, he I had my headphones off for a second, I was talking. <clears throat> You're gonna wake up with it tattooed on your head, Cody. Pentex are the bad guys. No, not me. <laughs> Do it to Frost. He, it's his catchphrase. No, All it right. would be you. I'm just going to use magic so every few minutes a speech bubble pops up next to him with that. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh... Oh, you want to bring Nevis to this game? Oh, boy. Well, anyways, uh, for now, though, thank you all so much for joining for Darkest Dreams World of Darkness. Uh, we should be back next week with more. I will be back in just a few minutes. Chim and I are going to be playing some Raft today. Uh, and then later on, we've got Retrograde Renegade Starfinder. So do stick around in the chat. Uh, we'll be right back in a few minutes. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Check out our website in the meantime, zgfgaming.com. We have links for our Discord, Telegram, Twitter, Patreon, all those good things there on the website, as well as down in the description below. Thank you to my donators, uh, patrons, and subscribers. It is very much because of your support that I'm able to continue bringing these streams to you all. Don't forget, we are trying to get the Patreon to $400 a month. It'll allow me to pay my rent each month. And with that covered, I will be able to continue streaming basically as long as we uh, keep the Patreon at that amount. 
So please consider uh, supporting over there, patreon.com slash zgfgaming. You'll find that link in the description and on the website. But for now, I bid you all the most fondest adieu. I'll be back shortly. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Pentex to the bad guys. <laughs> We're totally going to get a uh, merchandise, you know, a shirt that just has a speech bubble that says that. that I would buy be. this. Yeah. <laughs> I would too. Just have an angry looking werewolf and hold up with it. <laughs> yes. No, no, just the speech bubble. Anyways, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. <laughs>